Five not then, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Was salatu was salam ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa mursaleen. Nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Allahumma anfa'na bima alimtana wa alimna ma yanfa'una. Allahumma zidna ilman. Innaka anta alimul hakim. Allahumma ijjal hadihi al-muhadara hujjatan lana la hujjatan alayna. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Amma ba'd. This is our eighth class <coughs> in dealing with uh, Shajarat al-Iman, the Shaykh Abdurrahman al-Sa'adi, rahimahullahu ta'ala. Uh, we last finished our last class. We spoke about uh, Hadith al-Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. Qudsu ya Rasulullah. قل لي في الإسلام قولا لا أسأل عنه أحدا بعدك قال قل قل آمنت بالله ثم استقم ثم استقم النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام سفيان ابن عبد الله الثقفي he asked the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم tell me something about tell me something about messenger of Allah that if, about Islam, a statement that I won't ask anyone after you about. So the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam, he told him, Say that you believe in Allah, thumma stuqim, and be upright. Here, istiqama, as we mentioned before, it has a lot to do with action. It has a lot to do with action. So today, we'll continue with that, inshallah ta'ala. And we'll learn how the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. He had knowledge of his people. He had knowledge of his people. What does that mean? To have knowledge of your people. In other words, the Nabi alayhi salatu salam, he knew the conditions of his people. So you might find, in fact, you might find uh, different sahaba coming to the Prophet alayhi salatu salam and asking for advice. And he might tell one sahabi, do this. And he might tell another one, do that. And he might tell another one, do this. And you might, read, you might read the hadith and say, you know, these are different pieces of advice for different people. And that's an indicator that the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, he understood the conditions of his people individually. He knew them and he knew their situation. So in this hadith right here, or fi hadith ibn Abbas, al-mutafiqun alayhi, fi wafda abdul qais. So there was a group, a group of companions that came to see the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. And they said to him, Haythu Qalu. They said to him, Murna bi amrin faslin nukbiru bihi man wara'ana. He said, Oh Messenger of Allah, the group, they came to the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam. And they were only able to come to him because between them and the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam were non believers who hated them. But they were only allowed to come visit the Ashwar al Hurum, like certain months that you know fighting was you know prohibited in. At any event, they would come to the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam and they said, Tell us about something so that we can inform the people that come after us. Tell us something that we can benefit from and inform the people that come after us. al Jannah. And then when we get this information from you, it will be sufficient enough for us to enter into Jannah. So we can enter into Al Jannah. Wasa'aluhu an al Ashriba. An al Ashriba. And then they asked him about drinks. They asked him about drinks. Fa'amruhum bi arba'in wa nahahum an arba'in. So they asked him about four. The Prophet, they asked, or the Prophet, salatu he commanded them with four things and he prohibited them from four things. The first thing the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam he commanded them Amrahum bil Iman billahi wahda. The first thing he commanded them to do was to have Iman with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Believe in Allah alone. So then the Prophet Ali Salatu Salam he said, Atadaruna mal Iman billahi wahda. He said, Do you all know what 
having belief in Allah alone, do you know what that means? So when you, some of the ulama, when they mentioned this, these people, they were ahl lisan al arabi they, they had, they, understand, they understood the Arabic language, right? And they understood what iman meant in the heart. So what the Prophet ﷺ said to him, أَتَدَرُونَ مَا الْإِيمَانَ بِاللَّهِ وَحْدَ He said, do you guys know what having belief in Allah alone means? So then they replied, قَالُوا اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ أَعْلَمُ Allah and his messenger knows best. So some of the scholars look at this here and they say, this indicates that they intended the Prophet والسلام, he intended more than just the linguistic meaning of the word here. There's something more to it than that. And so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he replied by saying, Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah. He said it means, in other words, to bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped except for Allah. وَأَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ And that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is his slave and his messenger. وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ And to establish the prayer. وَإِتَاءِ zakat And to pay the zakat. وَصَوْمْ رَمَضَانِ And the fast in Ramadan. وَأَن تُعْتُوا مِنَ الْمَغْنَمِ الْخَمُسِ And when you're battling in war, and you give a fifth away in charity. Why would he say that? Because that had to be the condition that they were in during that time. And then the Prophet والسلام, he he warned them against four things. عن الحتم, عن and all of these four things here are different types of vessels. These vessels were used. And they will put dates in these different vessels and zibib and olives and so on and so forth with water and let it sit until it becomes alcohol. This was a fitna that they had. Is that clear? So the Prophet والسلام, he told them to do some things and he prohibited them from things. So we might say, well, we don't, no one here does that. We don't grab vessels and put you know, fruit and get dates in it and let it sit until it becomes alcohol. Well, that's not our condition. We do other stuff. Huh? Yeah, you go to the steak store. We do other stuff. People do other stuff. You don't do, you don't make your own alcohol. But the point here is that he understood the how. He understood the conditions of his people. He knew what they were doing. Fight. So then he said, so then the Prophet ﷺ told them, He said, preserve these things and tell the people, when you go back to your people, tell them about this stuff here, so that they may know these things here. This, this hadith here is a clear indication that Islam it has outward things that everyone can see that, that can show our iman, that will show a person's faith, such as praying, such as paying the zakat, such as fasting, and such as giving a form of charity, or such as giving uh, away a fifth of war booty if you were fighting during that time. All of these things... As the Sheikh Abdurrahman al-Sa'adi mentions, all of these things clarify to us what Iman is in detail with regards to actions and how actions comprise of a large part of Iman. Just like, you know, the origin of Iman starts in the heart, but what's in the heart comes out on the, on the limbs. What's in the heart generally manifests itself in a person's actions. فَكُلُّ مَا يُقَرِّبَ Anything that a person does from actions, statements, belief, all of these things are considered to be from Iman and how we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another hadith, وفي سنن أبي داود أن أبي أمامته قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحب لله وأبغض لله وأعطى لله ومنع لله فقد استكمل الإيمان النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام he said whoever loves for the sake of Allah and hate for the sake of Allah 
and gives for the sake of Allah and prevents from the sake of Allah, then this person has completed their iman. Here's a question. What are some things that people love for and hate for? Do people love and hate people based on, you know, this is money. Money. Aha. Money. Money. Uh -huh. People love for money and hate for money. How is that? What's, what does that look like? Go through illegal means. So, you hate those who so hate someone who has money and go through illegal ways to attain it. Okay. Any 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 other thing that we huh? Possessions. Possessions. Give me an example. What does it look like? Uh, a home, a home, a car. A car. So the question is this: Do we love like so? I guess the question is, do we love and hate a person based on some, something that's material? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, we can, yeah. I mean, is that, huh? Any tangible item. Any tangible item. So is that, I mean, can you see that happening? Do people do that? No. Something that we can realize by touching our senses. Say that again? Something that we can realize by way of our senses. Something that we can actualize. Okay. I don't understand that. Of oh, our senses. Okay. Yes. So how does that have to do with loving someone or hating someone based on that? Explain that connection. Okay. Now I might be slow this morning, so. <laughs> As it relates to those senses, um, those things become capitalized in a manner of speaking. Mm hmm Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, that was kind of deep right there. I gotta, I have to sit and ponder on that one. Go ahead. No, but it makes sense, though. It makes sense. Say again. Knowledge. And you hate them because of their lack of knowledge. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is the type of love and hate that is impermissible. All right. Because the Prophet Ali Salatu he mentions that whoever loves for Allah and hates for Allah and gives for Allah and prevents for Allah, this person has complete iman or perfect iman. Are there people who love for other than Allah? Are there people who hate for other than Allah? Maybe that should be the question. Are there people who love for Allah or other than Allah and hate for other than Allah? Muslims? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Absolutely. All right. So some examples would be for what? Maybe if you can help me do something, I love you. And then if you you cannot help me do the thing that I need, I don't like you anymore. I, I have a convenient, beneficial relationship from you. Either you can help me, you're my man, and once you can't help me, I'm done with you. I don't like you anymore. Or maybe people, what, do you, any other examples? Can someone else? Uh, nationalism? Nationalism. Yeah, your... Absolutely. To, to love for other than Allah and to hate for other than Allah. Yes, that could fit into that. Absolutely. Women. women. What does that look like? Give me an example. You love her for other than Allah. Yes. Yes. There, there are some brothers or sisters. They might love a, par a partner or their, their husband or wife more than they love Allah. In fact... There are even scenarios where, you know, we all know them here in this city. Sisters become Muslim because of a man. Uh, she practices Islam because of a man. And then one of two things. Either he, A, divorces her, she leaves Islam. Or B, he gets another wife and she takes her hijab off and every other, you know, this stuff happens. You have to ask yourself, was this, did you love for the sake of Allah and hate for the sake of Allah? Or was it for our own desires and what we deem to be uh, what we love as individuals? So loving and hate. You can't see love and hate in a person. 
You can't necessarily, sometimes, some people wear hate on their face, but we're talking about some people, they can hide it. They can hide their love and they can hide their hate, but this is something that's generally where? In the heart. This is in the heart. Well, a'ta wal minar, in giving and preventing something, this is something that is what? On the limbs. This is something that is on the limbs. Fil-dahir. This is something that can be seen. However, all of this is necessitated based upon sincerity. Loving for the sake of Allah and hating for the sake of Allah is based on sincerity. So imagine as a believer, when we say we love for the sake of Allah, we love what Allah loves. We love what Allah loves. We love the actions that Allah loves. From the actions that Allah loves, we love them. If Allah tells us things that we're supposed to do, we love these things because these things will what? Ultimately help us get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We love the times, the best times of the year that Allah loves. We love specific times of the day when it comes to making prayer or things that can increase us or help us get closer to him. We love that as well. We love the prophets and the messengers that came before us. And when it comes to hating for the sake of Allah, we hate the things that Allah hates. Just like some people here, we have friends. Some people have friends, right? I, don't, I might not know you, but if my man don't like you, I don't like you, right? That's more, everybody understands that language here in this city, huh? This is my man. He got a problem with you. I got a problem with you. And if he likes you, then I like you. And if he changes, then I'm changing, right? That's how everybody is here. Even if you don't say it, deep down, it's not, I'm not saying it's, it's a bad thing now. It's bad. But this is the way it works. If I got beef with you, if my man got beef with you, my whole team got beef with you. That's just the way it is. It's, it's unfortunate, but this is... So in this case, we're not loving and hating for the sake of Allah. We're loving and hating for other than that. We're loving and hating for our friends. We're loving and hating based on our desires. But here... To have this perfect type of iman, this hate here, and yubghadha, kullama abghadahullah. That means we hate everything that Allah hates. From kufr, from disbelief, from fusuk and sins and all types of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we hate the people that do those things. We hate the people that do those things and call us to it. To call us to disobedience of Allah and call us to disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it comes to giving, when it comes to giving something, when it comes to us giving something, then we give from those things that Allah commanded us to give. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and the word here is a'ta, as Allah jalla wa ala says in Surah Al-Layl, فَعَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Allah Jalla wa Ala says in Surah Al-Layl, as for one, the one who gives and fears Allah, and they give, they, they, Saddaqa bil husna, Saddaqa bil husna. Some of them say they understand the meaning of La ilaha illallah. Fasanu yassiruhu lil yusra. It will be easy for them to do good. In Tafsir al Qurtubi in the Quran, where Allah says, Fa'amma man a'ta, as for the one who gives. So some of the tafsir of the Qur'an, they say this is re referring to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. In fact, you will find that he would, during that time, he would purchase slaves, Muslims that were slaves. He would purchase them just to free them. He would purchase them just to free them. And even to the point, I think his father would even say to him, I think he would purchase the women slaves and free them. If I'm not mistaken, if someone, if I think I don't. From my memory serves me correctly, and his father would ask him, "Why wouldn't you buy the men? Because the men will at least can help you." And he was just—he was always trying to help the weak. This is Abu Bakr Siddiq, رضي الله تعالى عنه. طيب وهذا يشمل جميع ما أمر به العبد لا يختص بأعطاء المال. And likewise, when it comes to giving, give, giving is not only uh, with regards to wealth. It can be giving help. It can be any other thing. And likewise, preventing or keeping something away from someone for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever that may be. And likewise, 
al-mu'minu man amina huwa nasu ala dima'ihim wa amwalihim. And here is a tremendous, tremendous hadith. And this is something that we all have to ask ourselves about. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, a believer is the one who is entrusted. The people trust them with their life and their wealth. A believer, a believer is one who people trust them with their life and their wealth. How many people from among us, we can say people trust us with their lives and their wealth? As the Sheikh, he mentions, Rahimahullah, people trust, when you have this type of Iman, people will trust you with the most valuable things to them. The things that they consider, consider to be worth more than anything, they will entrust you with these things if they know that you are a believer. Think about this. A Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. Just tell you how, how, how the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was. Before Islam, he was known to be al-Amin. What is Amin? Trustworthy. trustworthy. He was known to be trustworthy. So much so that before, before Islam... But Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, they all loved him and they trusted him. Up until the point where he first invited his people to Islam, he said, he stood on the mountain and said, if I were to tell you that there was going to be a group of people coming to harm us in this town, would you believe me? They all say, yes. He said, yes, we haven't seen you to be, we don't know you to be a liar. This was before Islam. They said about the Prophet alayhi salatu saying, we don't know you to be a liar. We've never known you to be a liar. Of course we believe you. And then after that, he called them to Islam and said, I'm a messenger of Allah. They said, you are a liar. <laughs> they, oh, you're lying. This can't be. You're a liar. All right. Even having said that, when the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, when they made hijrah to Medina, <clears throat> when they made hijrah to Medina, he was still holding the possessions of the non-Muslims in Mecca. Pay attention to this. Even though he came with the religion of Al-Islam and they didn't like it, but they still knew he was trustworthy. To the point that he still kept, he still had the possessions of the people in Mecca during that time. So, you know, they didn't have banks back then. You couldn't just go to a bank and put your money in a bank account. Well, I got like three, four offshore accounts and not. The safest place for them to leave their possessions was with the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. Once he became Muslim, they didn't believe him, but we didn't hear a run on the bank though. We didn't hear about how he gave us our money back. They still, uh, we still trusted him. To the point that when the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was leaving to make hijrah to Medina, he entrusted someone to give everyone back their possessions. He could have easily took their stuff. Right or wrong? We have some Muslims here today. They believe it's okay to oppress people that are not Muslim. Oh, they're not Muslim. We can just take them. Out. Our Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam didn't do that. This is not from the, our religion to do stuff like that. To be upright, to be truthful, to be people that others can trust us and trust us with their belongings and things like that. So here, the Prophet Ali Salatu Wasalam he mentions a believer is the one where the people can entrust them with their wealth in their lives. And the Prophet ﷺ was a perfect example of that. A per even during the times. You got to think about this. Think about being persecuted, you know, people, Muslims being murdered, so on and so forth, but he still kept their wealth. He didn't, he didn't steal their wealth, even though he had possession of it. Even to the point before he passed away, وسلم, he still had... Uh, breastplates from armor that he borrowed from a Jewish person that he ensured that they got their rights back. This was our Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. It's not, you know, and these, the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, is the best person we should take our guidance from and what's correct and what is incorrect. All of these different verses are ahadith. It show us the understanding of Iman and how we should believe in Allah Jalla wa'ala. There's a famous statement by Imam Al-Hasan Al-Basri, who was a student of the, of the companions. He said, لَيْسَ الْإِيمَانُ بِالْتَمَنِّ وَالْتَحَلِّ 
walakinnahu ma waqara fil qulubi wasadaqathu al a'mal al imam al hasan al basri rahimahullah he says and this was reported rawahu al khatib al baghdadi who's also a, a tremendous scholar of hadith he says iman having faith in allah is not just merely hoping and wishful thinking oh i wish i could pray more i wish i could do more no just do it he said iman is not just wishful thinking iman is not just wishful thinking he says however iman is that which is firmly established in the heart and it comes to it comes to light on a person's limbs iman is not just what we want oh yeah to many we want to do better we want how many times we hear people say yeah, i want to be able to do better i want to do better do better believe in allah do better be around people that's going to aid you to do better a lot of times it's mental maybe we don't we're, maybe we we're, we're too tied up i remember before i became muslim a brother was telling me about islam <laughs> and he said at the time i wasn't ready to be muslim even though i knew islam was correct but you know i was still messed up my life wasn't all the way i said no i'm not ready yet you know if i be muslim i have to be serious but you know so the next day he will ask me are you ready i said no not yet not yet not yet and he said well listen it's better that you die a muslim committing sins than to die now i said why you didn't tell me that before <laughs> i would have took my shot a couple days ago so the point is when you make your mind up to do something it takes you know it's going to take time but you have to work you can't just say i believe and not and not work and not put forth some action what came up call and then the, the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam or allah jalla wa ala he says in surah at-taghabun he said wa man yu'min billahi yahdi qalba whoever believes in allah allah will guide their hearts allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will strengthen their hearts and then the Shaykh rahimahullah he says fal abdu idha asabathu musibah if a hardship comes to a slave of allah fa amana annaha min indillah so think about this he said if a hardship comes to a person and the person believes that this hardship came from allah wa anna allah and you believe that allah is all wise and all merciful wa fi taqdirha and allah knows what allah is doing wa annahu a'lamu bil masalih and that allah knows what's best for us better than we know what's best for ourselves allah knows what's best for us then we will allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide our hearts and strengthen us and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to be either patient happy submit to it we had to manina have a sense of tranquility that's for the one whose iman is at a certain level right when hardships come to us most of us is difficult to handle no doubt it's difficult it's not something that you know we 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 say okay yes bring me hardships no one wants hardships but when they come how do we deal with them how do we deal with them these are the things that the pride this is what this verse says well man yu'min billahi yahdi qalba whoever believes in allah allah will strengthen their heart allah will make their heart firm كما قال الله تعالى as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran inna alladhina amanu wa amilu salihati yahdihim rabbuhum bi imanihim then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever believes in Allah and do righteous actions Allah will guide them Allah will guide them uh with their iman with their iman and their belief in him in another verse Allah jalla wa ala he also mentions about iman again and iman is not just in the heart as we say it over and over again iman is not just in the heart rather iman is manifested on the limbs it comes on the limbs we see it on the limbs and a proof of this a very strong proof because there are some people who believe that you know my faith is only in my heart i don't have to do actions allah knows it's in my heart allah jalla wa ala says in surah al-baqarah verse 143 وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ إِيمَانَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِالنَّاسِ لَرَءُوفٌ رَّحِيمٌ الله جل وعلا says that he will not cause your faith to be lost for indeed Allah is merciful with his slaves 
here, the scholars of tafsir, many of them, they explain iman here to mean the salat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow your salat to be lost. Well, what is this verse talking about? What is this verse talking about? So many of the ulama of tafsir, they say that this verse here is referring to when the Muslims used to pray towards Beit al-Maqdis in Philistine. They used to pray towards... Uh, they used to pray towards uh, the Qibla or the Beit al-Maqdis. And when this verse came down, they were commanded to switch to the, to the Kaaba in Mecca. While they were praying there, some of the Sahaba were concerned. But what about the believers that came before us that passed that were praying to Beit al-Maqdis? What about their, their Salat or their belief? Is it still going to be accepted or not? And so this is when his verse was revealed. When can Allah imanakum, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not cause your iman to be wasted. And iman here is talking about their salat. It's talking about their salat because their salat was towards Bayt al Maqdis. It wasn't towards the Kaaba. And this is a very strong delil to show that iman has to do with actions. It's not just in the heart. Is that clear? طيب. And, and, and there are some major uh, <clears throat> benefit from this particular from this particular ayah. And so a Shaykh Abdul Rahman al Saadi he says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not cause the actions of a believer to be wasted. Whether that iman is a lot or that iman is a, lot, a small amount. As Allah Jalla, as the Prophet والسلام, he said that Allah Jalla wa Ala will remove from the hellfire. A believer who just has a small amount of iman. A small amount of iman. And this is also an indicator to show that the Muslims will not be in the hellfire forever. Ebedin. Right? This is not the belief of al-Islam. Rather, if Muslims go to the hellfire, wa nas'alallah salam wa afi, may Allah protect us from the hellfire. A'udhu billahi min an If Muslims go to the hellfire, then... Muslims will be there for a very long time, but they will not be in there forever. They will not be khalidina fiha abadan. This is not the belief of Ahlul Sunnah that the Muslims will be in the hellfire forever. But think, who wants to go to the hellfire, you know, for a thousand years? Who wants to be that person? Uh, who wants to be a person that says, okay, I'll go to the hellfire for a thousand years? La. A'udhu billah. Well, Kadalik, another thing, a glad tidings that a sheikh he mentions, And this is something that's very important. He says that any person who does an action and they attend by obedience to Allah, you know, they still may get some reward, even if they are making a mistake and so on and so forth. So a sheikh, uh, and this is something that it, it needs some explanation. Because the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he also mentions, فَإِنَّهُ إِنَّمَا عَمَلَ ذَلِكَ الْعَمَلْ إِيمَانًا بِاللَّهِ قَصْدًا لِطَاعَتِهِ وَلَكِنَّهُ تَعَوَّلَ تَعْوِيلًا أَخْطَعَ فِيهِ أَوْ أَخْطَعَ بِلَا تَعْوِيلٍ فَخَطَعُهُ مَعْفُوًا عَنْهِ So the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he says that if a person does any form of action, but they believe in Allah and their intentions is to obey Allah, however, they have some misunderstandings or they make a mistake or so on and so forth, then they are pardoned uh, based on their iman and what they believe. But this is something that... But this is something that needs some clarification. Um, a tambi here is for bid'ah. Okay? A shaykh of Darazak al-Badr he said about this, وَإِن صَحَّتْ قَصْتُهُ وَالْمَرْءُ فِيهَا فَإِنَّهَا لَا يَشْفَعُ لَهُ فِي قَبُولَ الْعَمَلِ If a person, even if a person has intentions to do good, to do good deeds, a person has intentions, their intention is good, but they do something that is a bid'ah, 
with regards to worship. Because with this explanation, someone could look at this and say, oh, I can worship a lot every way I want to. Instead of putting my hands on my chest, I'll put them behind my neck. Right? Or instead of, I'm just saying, people make up stuff to worship a lot. You're going to come up with a way to get closer to a law that the companions didn't legislate. Huh? So, in this, it says that in order for a person to be rewarded for their actions, pay attention here, we're talking about actions. In order for a person to be rewarded for their actions, then those actions have to fulfill two conditions. The first condition is al mutabaah following the, following the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, and the next one has to be what? Does anyone know? Al-Ikhlas. Sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as the Nabi alayhi salatu was salam, he says, Man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwarad. Whoever does the action and is not from us, then the action will be rejected. Wa man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fahuwarad. Whoever invents a newly, a new affair or brings a new affair to the religion, then it will not be Accept it from them. So then, when the Sheikh here, when he's talking about them being pardoned or get reward, what could he be talking about? So there's some statements uh, from Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. He has a book called Iqtida Sarat Al Mustaqim. And in it, he talks about people celebrate because Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah believes that it is an innovation to celebrate the birthday of the Prophet. And there's numerous uh, statements from the scholars of the past about celebrating his birthday, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But he mentions, uh, with regards to the people that celebrate the birthday of the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasallam, out of love, and they love the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasallam, and they they you know they magnify Allah subhanahu wa taala, and so on and so forth. So he said. He said that it's possible that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could reward these people based on their love for Allah and His Messenger, not for their action. And then he says, And they will not be rewarded for their bid'ah. They will not be rewarded for their bid'ah, but it's possible that they can be rewarded because of their love. So perhaps the shaykh could have meant that by the statement here, Allah Ta'ala A'lam. Does that make sense? Like, actions that are bid'ah will not be accepted. Why? Because it was against the mutaba'ah on the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, and likewise, and they may have had ikhlas, but they didn't have mutaba'ah. So that particular, that particular action will be what? Rejected. Why would it be rejected? Because of Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, Man amila amalan, laysa alayhi amruna. Whoever does the action, and it is not from us, then they will be rejected. But here, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Saymiyyah is also talking about the niyyah. Perhaps a person could be rewarded for their intention. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Is that clear? Tayyip. And then another hadith, wa fi hadith al-sahih, and he said, mentions a hadith, if a hakam, ijtahada, a person that is a ruler, and he strives to come up with a ruling, for asaba, and if he is correct, falahu ajran, then this ruler will get, this judge, he will get two rewards. And if he strives to find the ruling and he makes a mistake, then this person will receive warm reward. And his mistake is pardoned. His mistake is pardoned. And then he also mentions that a person if they intend to do some type of righteous action, and they are in, they are, you know, they are intent on doing that righteous deed without anyone stopping them. So, for example, a person is intent on making umrah, so they put or making hajj. They put everything in place. They put everything in place to make this happen, and then all of a sudden they are prevented. Maybe you know. They canceled the flights. Maybe they shut Hajj. Anything can happen. 
right? He says that if a person is prevented from doing good and they wanted to do it, then the person, will, it will be written for that person, that which they intended. That which they intended. Kamathabatadalika fis Sahih Muslim, as it was affirmed in the hadith in, in Sahih al Sahih Muslim, man hadith Abi Musa, marfu'an, with the Prophet, alayhi salatu was salam, he said, man marida o safara kutibalahu ma kana ya'malu sahihan muqiman. He said that whoever gets sick or travels, and they, and they used to do this, this person will get. Um, the act or the reward as if they were healthy. So if a person was sick or if they traveled, say, for example, a person makes sunan all the time, but if they travel, they don't make it, they still will get uh, the reward as if they were uh, present or they haven't traveled. And this here, go, this here shows the importance of being consistent with regards to worship, not leaving things off. If you make your sunan prayer all this, imagine, this, imagine if you make your sunan uh, your uh, sunnah rawatib, your sunnah rawatib every day. And then you happen to travel, and you know, you don't make the sunnah when you're traveling, but you still get the reward. You still, it's still written for you. Right? And then the Shaykh Rahimullah mentions, وَيَدْخُلُوا فِي ذَلِكَ مَنْ أَقْعَدَهُ الْكِبْرَ عَنْ And say, for example, we're young, Right? So we're able to do certain acts of worship consistently. And then all of a sudden, if Allah blessed us with old age, we're not able to do those acts of worship anymore. You're still getting a reward as if you were doing them. Imagine that. It's nice. It is. But this is why it's important to show consistency in worship. And this is advice for myself, first and foremost. And inshallah, everyone else can benefit from it. But this is something that we should really, really think about. Small acts of worship we could do all the time. And then if something may happen, we're not able to do it. But we know that this is something that we do more at Tad. This is something that becomes our adder, something that becomes our normal practice. And if we, if we can't do it for a particular reason, it's still written for us. Huh? We'll still get that intention or that reward for that. Niyyah. Is there anything that was clear, uh, unclear? Is there anything that was unclear about this? Tayyip. Inshallah ta'ala, we're going to finish with this. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an. Na. Yes. To love and hate for the sake of Allah. Somebody might hate today. You might have to love that person the next day because they will come back to Allah and do the righteous deed. Right. Yes, you have to take a middle course, no doubt. You have the thing is you don't want to hate someone so much that if they rectify their situation, you know. Unfortunately we, we you know, it's sad if people here in urban America that are Muslim and they make a mistake, and they fall into some error. Sometimes we have a tendency to shun people. There's no comeback for them. I said, you're done. You write Muslims off. And I mentioned this before, but, you know, when you write Muslims off, like you condemn them, maybe they fall into sin, maybe they even fell into bid'ah. The object is to help them. You're not going to watch someone drown and you, you have a, imagine you have a rope that you can help somebody and you're just looking at them squirming in the water like that. That's messed up. Throw the rope. Throw them a rope and help them. This is just natural. It just doesn't make, you know, it doesn't make sense for a person. If you see somebody hurting, you're not going to help them. You're just going to watch them in pain. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It just goes against a person's, like, you know, just the nature of a person that has, Sound intellect. If you see, you have some information that you can help somebody. You can help change somebody's life for the better. You can give them something that will add value to their life. And you don't give it to them, then I'm going to keep it with me because I don't like him. So, yeah, loving and hating is moderate. It's moderation. Moderation, no doubt. It's no extremism in the religion. All right? You teach people, you help people. People make mistakes. We're human. How many times have we seen people 
How many times have we seen people, you know, they just, their religion, at least to themselves, their religion is on such a high level. And they might talk about everybody. And three years later, they're not even practicing Islam anymore. How many people saw this? You see people, they, you know, they, oh, this is what it is. And you're, you're condemned to the hellfire. You're this, you're that. Some years later, what happened to Fulano Fulana? They're not even practicing Islam anymore. Huh? Sometimes people go too far to the extremes on things, and then they, they, they burn themselves up. They can't keep that pace up. It's not realistic. Realistic is being in the middle, learning, asking questions, having mercy in your heart for the believers. Even if they don't, they, they, you know, oh, they're misguided deviants. So if they're misguided deviants and you're guided and you have the ilm, Allah blessed you with some knowledge, educate. That's what, the do. That's what the scholars of Islam do. They teach. They educate. They help people. Islam brings people from darkness and brings them to the light. A sunnah brings people to the light. Imagine the time some of us here, maybe you didn't know about sunnah before. You didn't know about following the Prophet والسلام, to the extent where you know this has to be a practice in your life. And when people find out about it, it's like a light comes to their heart. It makes it easy for them to worship their Lord. Everything, following the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, it makes everything easy for a person. There's no difficulty in that. There's no difficulty in that. And it also gives you parameters to use. It gives you gauges. It, it makes your life easy. It makes your life easy. <laughs> At any event, what, like the brother said, when it comes to love and hate, we stay in the middle. We're not extreme. Not to the right, not too far to the right, not too far to the left. And if you have some information that can help people, don't keep it to yourself. Unless you fear. Now, there are some people that, you know, some people, they have stuff with them that you're afraid for your own religion. If that's your situation and this doesn't apply to you, stay away. But if you're of those people that, you know, alhamdulillah, maybe you learned a little bit about the religion, help the people that need help. Help them. Imagine you help that person. They understand something they didn't understand before, and they go help someone else, and then they go help someone else, and then they go help someone else, and you get that reward. At any event, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.